Yes. Thank you, Mimi. Good afternoon, everybody who is attending this uh, this uh, international webinar on forward and future contracts. I will uh, just introduce you to the uh, bovine project because this webinar is organized within the framework of um, the uh, European project bovine, which is about uh, is it the beef um, uh, cattle network for um, stimulating innovation in on farms uh, in Europe. Next slide, please. Uh, the principles of this bovine project, which is uh, financed by the EU, is uh, to understand the challenges facing the European beef sector, first of all, and um, it's in particular in appreciating the role of demand-driven innovations. Um, so it's uh, within this project, which is a thematic network for innovation, um, the uh, project is uh, collecting the demand for innovation from the farmers, from the beef cattle farmers in particular, but also from the supply chain, but the beef cattle farmers are in, at the core of the project, in order to share knowledge between researchers and stakeholders like farmers. And um, it's uh, typically, of course, a multi-actor approach, which is applied right in this, uh, this, in this project. Uh, next slide, please. It is a European innovation network with national and regional networks. Uh, the, the slide uh, afterwards will show you afterwards how many countries. But there are committed partners, advisors, communicators, practitioners. And as I said before, it's a bottom-up approach responding to the needs of the farmers, of the European farmers, uh, who uh, wants to apply new um, concepts, techniques on their farms. Um, and of course, there is an engagement also from the European national policy. Uh, all our overall the project, there is a multi-actor involvement and the communication and dissemination are key in this project. It's not about new research, but it's about disseminating existing research in particular. Um, that's the core of uh, this thematic network directed to the uh, beef cattle farmers in Europe. Next slide, please. Um, as you see in this slide, uh, it's about sharing knowledge from science and practice. So it's not only about um, communicating science-based innovations, but also to, to distribute and disseminate practice-based uh, innovations which are applied by farmers, which not, not always all farmers know. And uh, within this project, we collaborate uh, with 18 partners in each country each of the nine EU member states, there are research institutes and uh, farmers organizations together collaborating. Um, altogether, uh, we are pointing at the target of 250,000 beef farmers in, in Europe. And it's financed by the EU for three years. We are now in the third year of the project for about 2 million euros. Yes, please. In this graph, you see, uh, let's say, the concept of, of the, the whole project. Um, we see here at the core of, the, of this graph that uh, it's all about exchanging knowledge between farmers, between researchers and farmers, and um, of both, both uh, science-based and practice-based uh, uh, knowledge. And uh, sometimes certain innovations are applied in some countries, but other farmers in the other countries often do not know. And so it's uh, the core of the whole project is about share, sharing knowledge. Please, yes, the next one. And here you see this, how this in this nine countries is working. Each uh, red uh, spot on this, on this uh, uh, slide is showing the partners in the different countries. But um, the red spots are the partners, but each in each country also regional national networks are set up. Um, so the, the partners in each country are have set up an, a national networks of other beef cattle farmers, associations and research institutes in such a way that in France, in Spain, Italy and Poland and all the countries you, have, you see here on the map, 
that they are involved in this in this project. Please, yes, the next slide, please. And here is the slide with uh, in the first circle with the, uh, the partners of the project and the committed media partner. So in each of the countries, there is a farmer's journal which is connected to this uh, project. So the innovations are published in this uh, in these reviews. And there is an advisory group uh, composed of uh, Copa Tojeka, uh, UFRAS and ERABS, the European uh, Network for Sustainable Beef. Please, yes. And the last slide, well, the almost last, last slide is that we are working in four thematic areas. There is the area of socioeconomic resilience, animal health and welfare, production efficiency and meat quality, and environmental sustainability. So four thematic areas. And each year uh, we, we treat two topics in each of these thematic areas. So eight topics per year are treated. And with, with for, for all these topics, um, we collect these uh, science-based and practice-based uh, innovation for the dissemination. And today, we will be in the framework of uh, the socioeconomic resilience, uh, the theoretic area, and today in particular the attention will be paid to uh, a specific uh, subject, the forward and future contracts. And um, I would like to give the word now to my colleague Magda Fontes Aguiar from Lisbon University. Who will introduce you to the to the uh, to the subject and to the two speakers from uh, Lisbon University who will have today uh, their presentations about this uh, this subject. Please, uh, Magda. Thank you, Kais, and good afternoon to all of you. It's a pleasure to have you with us for this webinar. Um, and I would do, like to give a, a first word to the speakers. Uh, which is a pleasure to have with us, and thank you for having been able to okay. accept this uh, challenge. And I will start by introducing Professor Pedro Pim Vieira. Uh, he will give us a talk on the future and forward contract with a very challenging name, What If We Could Get the Future? And Pedro is an assistant professor of finance in the management department of the School of Economics and Management at the University of Lisbon and as a PhD in Management and Finance by University of Lisbon. Pedro is also a member of the Advanced Research Center and of the Portuguese Association of Financial Analysts, and he teaches at all levels of education at the School of Economics and Management University. He also teaches in Angola and Mozambique, and also at the Military Academy Air Force Academy and Military University Institute on an ad hoc basis. Pedrin Vieira has published several research papers is highly in highly ranked and peer-reviewed journals and has participated in international training and consulting projects, namely recovery and management of companies and project evaluation. In the last years, we have started a collaboration that I hope will continue. Um, and now I will introduce Tomás Machado, is an animal production engineer and holds a scholarship within bovine projects since 2020. He graduated at Agronomy Superior Institute, uh, also at the University of Lisbon, and has recently completed his master's degree at the Faculty of Veterinary Medicine of University of Lisbon with a final thesis on the use of futures and forward contracts as a risk edging strategy in the European risk or beef cattle market under both my supervision and Pedro Rino Vieira uh, supervision. So I will now give the floor to the speakers, wishing you all a fruitful and really interesting discussion. I think it's a very important uh, subject that we are able to listen to today. In particular, at the moment, this really, really um, worrying times where agricultural products are facing new challenges, particularly in terms of how to trade and in terms of negotiating. 
So thank you again. And Pedro, and now the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Magda. Uh, I'm now going to share my screen. Okay. Well, um, once again, good afternoon to everyone. It's a pleasure to be here to, with you today, talking about uh, what if you could guess the future? Well, actually, I guess this might be kind of a weird question because, of course, we want to know the future, but we also know that we can't. Nevertheless, um, there are in finance some people that we call that we do what we call technical analysis that they try to look to the past that past uh, to historical prices and in this case while looking to to um, the evolution of the, um, the price of um coffee at the web this is from brazil uh, spot prices per head it's not here but actually it should have been here it was here before somehow it disappeared and what happens is in the last five years, we can see that we have here the kind of three years more or less with some stability of prices, and then it starts going up. And it might be a bit weird, but actually, the people from technical analysis, when they look to this specific area here, what they see is two shoulders and a head. And they say, when you have this kind of pattern, then after that, the price will go up. So. It seems that you can look to the price, to the, to the, the past, and guess the future. Yes, ma well, perhaps not. Why? Because the point is not how the price evolves over time, but how the price changes over time. And if we look to the monthly return of price, return is what we call it in finance, but price variation is perhaps uh, easier. What you can see is, yeah, the price goes up and down, but in a totally random way. We see no pattern here, okay? So actually, what seems to be a pattern isn't anything, okay? Yeah, the price is going up, but the, the real question is, on in each of these points, for example, here, the price was going up and then it was, it decreases. So we, we don't know. So can we say that it's impossible to guess the future? Actually, in finance, we have very creative people, and at a certain point in time, they come up with these future and faltered contracts. And basically, let me tell you this. Today, two hours ago, I updated this table. I actually have all that I'm using here. And today, and this is for the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, so this is for uh, cattle in the US. Uh, this is not a specific kind is a kind of a basket with several kinds of different um, um, with different kinds of, of, of cattle. And actually, if today I agree with, I can agree with someone that I will buy or sell um, uh, live cattle at this price, this, uh, sorry. There was here, this, forget this, okay? This is cents, not US dollars, um, per pound, okay? So each pound of a head, of an animal has a cost per pound of $1.37, one okay? So actually, in it today, I can agree for contracts uh, to buy or to sell in these future moments in time, at these different prices. And you can say, but I don't want June or August, I want July, and it, well, you don't have here. Let me explain the differences in a while. So looking to the future market, we can see that we expect the prices actually to go up uh, for the next year, and then it will eventually go down a bit. Of course, this can change. Why? Because the prices changes and that's what actually what we have here. We cannot identify what happens because it depends on what new information 
and unexpected information arrives to market in, in any moment. So, the thing is, we actually have a way to know what at what at which price we can we can sell or buy in the future. But make no mistake, this is not about making more money or losing money. This is about risk management. The concern here is I want to avoid surprises. I want to be certain that I want to be certain about the cash flows I will receive in the future. Okay. I can, of course, and, and this means that basically if in the budgeting process I imagine I forecast that in two months, in one year, I will buy or sell a certain quantity of livestock at a given price. Okay. And I know today that the price at which I will buy or sell is not what I forecast today. It will be something can be higher, can be higher, or it can be lowered. Okay. How higher or how lowered, I don't know. Okay. And I I'm comfortable if the price is increases. Okay, I'm comfortable with this gains side. Okay, I'm comfortable with this upside potential, but I'm not comfortable if the prices goes down and I have losses. Actually, our intuitive notion of risk is avoiding losses, is taking care of losses. But in finance, the mainstream definition of risk is having a result different than what we expect. It can be better, it can be worse, okay? So as I wrote here, uh, the prospect cut ahead of price per pound will depart from the expected price. And I want to decrease the probability of this. And eventually, that is what we have here, okay? When you go from this re red line to the blue line, by decreasing the probability of having an unexpected or too unexpected or too far away price than what we expected. Eventually, we can, and it is, it is perfectly possible to avoid any variation at all, okay? So, how fixing today the price in the future? Actually, there are some other products for derivative products that we can use just to control for losses, but that's not what is at stake today. Today, what is at stake is we actually def, um, fix the price, okay? And you can do this with what you call forward commitments. Forward commitments, basically, we establish two parts, establish the identity and quantity of the underlying. In this case, the underlying is cattle. Uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. We will define how you execute or sell to the contract when it expires, when you get to the maturity. So basically this means I'm going to do this settlement in cash. So I'm just going to transfer cash or I am actually going to deliver the cattle or receive the cattle, okay? Two possibilities. And of course we will uh, fix the price. Yeah? You can do this in two different ways, with futures and forward contracts. Forward contracts uh, is basically a very customable, customable contract between two parts that know each other and they agree with the given price and a certain set of conditions that are of interest for both parts. So it's a kind of a win-win situation, okay? It's in the plus side, we have the high level of customization that is possible. On the other way, it's more risky, and I'm going to explain why in one minute. The alternative is the futures. The futures is a product that is traded in a, in a, in a change by the CMI, the Chicago uh, Mercantile Exchange. Very regulated contract, so very, very standard. standard. Okay. You, you have standard tides where everything is standard. You cannot change a bit. And you can just choose the maturity that is of more convenient to you. So everything is settled in advance. 
nevertheless, you can you always have the possibility of do a physical uh, exchange, but you can only choose to do a cash um, a trade here, okay? So, and you have dairy settlement. I'm not going to explain the difference of risk and why we have this dairy settlement. What is the difference? Let's start with a thought to do with forwards and let me tell you an, an example. Let's say that, and now going back to see the data again, I want, I need to buy for some reason, or to sell, in this case, the example is to buy. So buy a long position in October, 2022, this contract, because it's the future, is for the last business day of October at noon at this price per pound, okay? Just a second. Here it is, the example. So, you decide to go long on a one, uh, one October twelfth cut a forward contract at a future price of this. This is the future price, right? Each contract has a size of 30,000 pounds. Actually, what I'm doing here is using the same, uh, because I'm going to give a, an example of a forward in the future, I'm using the same conditions in both to show you the difference, okay? Actually, in a forward, you can uh, you can change all this. So this is the future price per pound. That means today you agree that you are going to do this trade in the last business day of October at this price. So that means you are going to pay 57.15 US dollars, okay, per contract, okay. So. The number of contracts you, do, you decide to choose is a bit more complex, and it's a bit it's about the the level of insurance you are you are trying to 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 get. Okay, so this is what happens. Then at the trading day, in the last business day of October, you go to the spot market and you see that this is the price. Okay, so you have two possibilities. Oh, you forgot the stock market, the spot market, and you just um, execute your contract. And the settlement of the contract is physical. This means you are going to some warehouse somewhere um, of convenience to you and to the other part, and you collect the cattle with you and you bring it home. Um, that's one possibility. The other possibility is you buy in the spot market as you always do with your usual partners and regarding this contract you just do a cash uh, settlement how let's see if this is the spot price and this price is higher than the future price as you that is here what happens is you are going to buy the 40,000 pounds at this price per pound and you're going to have a cost of 57.40 then, because the price increases, you are going. You have the right to receive a compensation from the other part. That compensation is the difference between the spot price and the future price. So, for the one contract, is two fifty. Okay, so you have this total cost minus what you receive. Your final cost is. 57.15, which is exactly what we have seen before, okay? However, the counterpart can default, and in the end, you can, the dead one can, it can say, okay, I don't have the money, I'm not going to give you anything, okay? So we have a loss. Let me tell you, in the beginning, this contract is, you can engage in the contract for free, okay? You can sign the contract for free. You can you do it. It's it's free. Okay, you just enter the contract, so you have no cost with it. And but in the end, you can have a loss because the other part can default. This is somehow um, risky, and it's a pro well, it's it's the downsides of, of, of this kind of insurance. If what if the price instead of going up? decided to, it the price decreases. In this case, the spot price 142 is lower than the future price. 
So in this case, you have to pay to the other party 350. You buy at a low price, so you, it's less expensive in the spot market. This, what you pay in the spot market plus the compensation you pay totals the predefined price. Again, risk management. We're not trying. To, you are not trying to have an advantage over the market. Okay, you are not trying to make more money. You are not trying to save money. We are not trying to beat the market. We are trying to avoid price risk. Okay. Regardless of what happens to the market, you know your price in advance, and you can manage your operation certain that that price is untouchable. So we have no bad surprise. Okay. When it comes to futures, you have less flexibility because you don't define the day of the trading. In this case, I'm using the same day because I want to keep the comparison. To, uh, I want to have this um, to, to, to compare the forward in the future, I don't have, to, I want to, them to be to as equal as possible, but in the real world, you can have a contract, a forward contract, very, very um, um, tailored made, okay? On, but when it comes to features, everything is predefined, you just choose the contract. It's the same contract, is everything the same, so, you know how much you have to buy. The difference is to avoid the default risk I told you about, you have the obligation, both parts have the obligation to do a deposit in your broker. It's what you call the margin. The initial margin, this guy is imagine it's $30,000 and you have a maintenance um, Margin of 28,000. This is a kind of minimum balance you, you can have in this. What's how this works? In the, in the beginning of the contract, this is the, the price. Okay. Then, in the end of the day, in the end of the first day, the set of price is the, the close price in the end of the day, decreases to 142.5. Okay. So, if you engage contract in the end of the day, you will pay less 150. So it's a kind of a loss you have. So this money is transferred to the other part. It, this means your deposit, your margin balance will decrease to 29,850. Um, okay. And then the prices goes down and goes down. And at a certain point, it went down so much that your margin balance is lower than the minimum margin. So you have a margin call. That means you have to do an additional deposit to go back to the initial, to, to, um, to the initial mar uh, margin, okay? You, you do this. Fortunately, the prices goes up, goes up, goes up, and in, at maturity, it's higher than the, the future price, so we have to write to receive 250 as you have, as we have seen before. So you have more money in your margin balance, in your margin account, than in the beginning of this contract. So yeah, each time the balance is higher than the initial balance, you have to write to withdraw the money. Okay, in this case, just at maturity. This is safer than forwards. Why? Two reasons. In the first place, you do this on a daily basis. By doing this on a daily basis, you not know, just in the end of the contract, we expect the, the gain or the daily gain or the daily loss to be lowered. If it is from an, of a lowered amount, it might it it's less likely to have a default. But more important than this is the existence of a clearing house. The, creator, the clearing house is a kind of insurance on insurance that avoids the, the, this default risk. I'm going to explain you with this, with this um, 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 figure. 
Um, imagine that you add, in, if you add, okay, so the prices goes up, okay? As we can see, in the end, the prices goes up. If the prices goes up, that means you are saving money when you compare to the market, okay? So if you are saving money, you have to write to receive, you are the long traded because we are, you are going to buy. The short traded, I'm going to sell, is to give money. So the short traded opens a margin account on the broker. The broker does something similar in the clearinghouse member, we will, and, and they can be the same or not. And the clearinghouse member will have here um, a, a, a kind of a bank account too, here in the clearinghouse. You can see this as a big kind of big common wallet, okay? So each member of this market puts money in this common wallet or portfolio. And then we, it's less likely that we run out of money because, okay, one part, one couple, three, eventually might not do the deposit they are supposed to do. But because everyone else we do we do so, and uh, they are money enough there to compensate everyone for the gains. Since we have this scheme, the risk of default virtually disappeared. Of course, the greenhouse has the right to prosecute any any part that defaults. Okay, but that's the second step. This guarantees that the market works and in a, to, uh, in a very uh, safe way, okay? To finish, if uh, the prices decreases, that means when you go to the spot market, we're going to pay less, so we have to compensate the other part. So the long trader gives money to the broker, to the creating house member, then in the creating house, um, uh, we all, um, our positions are, are balanced, and then the short trader will receive the money, okay? So, to summarize, yes, you can know the future because we have future markets and we have forward markets, forward markets in which we got future markets, we have the prices right there in, this, in, the, in exchange. Regarding forward contracts, you can very easily agree with someone, the conditions, the terms that are perfect for, for both parts. So you can avoid, or at least control in a very significant way, your price risk. This is not about beating the market, this is about price stability, okay? So yes, we can do it. So this is all uh, I have to discuss with you. I hope it, I was, um, I more or less, perhaps a bit too long. Um, thank you so much. Uh, I'm not going to give the word to Magda again. Thank you, Magda. Thank you very much, Pedro. And we will now, uh, if someone has uh, questions, we will wait to uh, the end after the second speaker. And now I will give the floor to Tomas, please. Thank you, Pedro. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for the opportunity to be here to present this topic. Uh, greet the other fellow speakers, uh, Keys, Professor Pedro, uh, Professor Magda also, and the old lecture. Uh, my presentation today will be on use of futures and forward contracts as an aging strategy in the European cattle market. And I will address these topics during my presentation, starting with a brief introduction where I will contextualize the beef pro cattle production sector, uh, respective risk associated with production and support tools available to beef cattle farmers. Next, I will present some practical examples of this type of contracts in other countries, as well the main benefits and potential obstacles. 
After these examples, I will take uh, on more detail about the research carried out uh, with my dissertation, uh, master degree dissertation, namely the research methods, the main results, and finally present the conclusions of this work. So taking into account that the global beef market sector, uh, we can characterize it as a sector with a global market value of 350 billion euros, uh, being slaughtered annually about 302 million uh, bovine animals for meat production. Uh, regarding trade balance, Australia is the large, largest exporti exporting country followed by Brazil and the United States of America, and on the other side, China is the main importing country. Uh, European sector also plays a, also is a main player in this sector, and it um, and it currently uh, is currently facing some several challenge, namely uh, rising production cost, uh, costs like feed prices, uh, namely cereals, uh, fertilizer prices, fuel prices, also decreases in production. And one one um, one challenging that we deal uh, on daily basis: environment sustain sustainability. Um, once half of the greenhouse gases emissions uh, from agricultural activity are associated with cattle production, uh, with 37% of this value corresponding to beef cattle production. If these challenges uh, are not officially addressed, uh, they can turn into risks and hazards for beef cattle farms uh, and also the producers. Um, and we can um, uh, we can say that there are three types uh, of different risks, environmental risks, biological risks and economic risks. In order to face these risks, uh, beef cattle farmers have several tools at their disposal, like economical support, like common agricultural policy, um, producers organizations, and the topic that brings us here today, edging strategies, uh, futures and forward contracts, which Professor Pedro explained previously with more detail. I will now present uh, examples of the use of these contracts in other countries, starting with Brazil. Uh, future contracts in, in Brazil are traded on the futures and commodity exchange BMF, with refer a reference to the Sao Paulo market um, spot prices from Sao Paulo market. In 2011, uh, there was made a research um, regarding the use of uh, risk management mechanisms uh, in beef uh, in Brazilian beef cattle sector. Um, 86 beef cattle farmers were surveyed uh, on the use of um, futures and forward contracts, and the first main result was that 36% uh, uh, of the beef cattle farmers adopted risk management mechanisms on an average age of 49 years. The risk, uh, here, risk management mechanisms are futures and forward contracts. The second result was that beef cattle farmers who did not practice risk man management uh, used more equity loans to pay off debts. Um, which, which means that um, risk management mechanisms are very useful in production. The main players are uh, beef cattle farmers, retailers and slaughterhouse. Um, regarding future markets, we can have two positions. Um, edgers, that are the part that want to uh, don't want uh, um, want to manage the risks and the speculators uh, that want the, to assume the risk and the dynamic is made uh, between these two parts. Um, so in Brazil, there is a tradition that beef cattle farmers protect themselves from the spot market by trading futures and forward contracts. In the United States of America, the birthplace of future markets uh, with the creation of Chicago Mercantile Exchange, there is an evidence that between uh, beef cattle farmers and buyers of cattle, uh, the producers negotiate twice as much futures contracts, reaching values of around 6 million animals at a time. Um, contractualization of future contracts in an in a investor perspective, with the main objective of diversifying investment portfolios, 
um, we can say that in the United States of America um, uh, is different from Brazil. Um, this means that uh, investors in the United States, many players don't even play a role on beef cattle sector, but they want to play uh, with the market, uh, sometimes beat the market, but there, there isn't the, the topic for today and is not the, the main objective of this type of uh, tools for beef cattle farmers. But there is a, there's also that uh, persper perspective. Now, um, analyzing the benefits and potential obstacles. From benefit side, we can see that um, there is a protect production from risks associ associated with market price volatility caused by extreme weather events, food resource scarcity, external competition from other producing countries. Uh, there's also a reallocation of risk associated with production, better production planning based on behavior of future markets. Uh, in the case of forward contracts, arbitrary negotiation of contract terms and the possibility of managing economical losses with greater criteria in critical times. By the other end, we can find some potential obstacles like finding a partner or a financial institution to mediate this type of contract, uh, the cleaning houses, uh, lack of resources and means to monitor future markets like lack of time, difficulty in understanding cards or assessing information describing the reality of the markets and insufficient uh, production scale to justify the application of future contracts. Now, we have reached the second part of my presentation, which will focus on the research carried out for my uh, master degree thesis conducted jointly with Professor Pedro and Professor Magda. Um, the objectives uh, on this work were to characterize the beef cattle sector, analyze the main economic risks and supports associated with uh, beef cattle production, describe the use of forward and future contracts, and uh, the most important to test the willingness of European beef cattle farmers to use these financial tools. So in order to achieve these objectives, uh, partic uh, part particularly um, the last one, uh, we collect data uh, regarding risk management on beef cattle farms and beyond uh, through a survey made available to beef cattle farmers via online through Google Forms uh, platform. A total of uh, 100, 101 producers um, answered this survey through Europe. The main results uh, of this research, you can see here that 73% um, of the beef cattle farmers have a college degree or higher, which means that, are, that they are skilled uh, or have a, some, time, some kind of experience college uh, knowledge, which is good. 80% uh, of the farms are family run, which is accord with uh, many results from other studies. Only 21% of the farms export cattle and the average of animals sold each year is uh, 464 uh, at an average price of 4 euros and 33 cents um, kilogram carcass. Um, now, considering the main risks, we can observe at table two that the beef cattle farmers identify uh, these four risks as the um, as a main risks association with production, extreme drop, uh, drop, cattle disease, feed price volatility, and beef cattle price volatility. On the other end, uh, at the table three, three, we can see the main risk precaution that they use. There is collection and analysis of production data, use of preserved feed, and preservation of animal welfare. Uh, regarding now risk mechanisms, uh, we can see that uh, at the graph one, only 8% of big cattle farmers don't consider important to use um, risk management mechanism to control beef cattle price, which is a, a, a good uh, indicator. Um, and we can also see at graph two that the main mechanism on use for beef cattle farmers is diversification of on-farm production and others, um, with uh, 20%. 
also note that futures and forward contracts have a median value of 9%, which is a good indicator, could be better. Uh, now, considering um, beef cattle farmers' risk management level, uh, it, it should be noted that uh, at graph 3, 62% um, of producer, uh, beef cattle farmers assume they are prepared to manage a risk. However, uh, this percentage decreases to 55% when the risks are financial type. We can see at table 4 that four contracts are the... Um, risk management mechanism that uh, give more interest to producers to know more about also future contracts uh, interest the, the beef cattle farmers but four contracts are the strong uh, mechanism risk management mechanism uh, we also try to understand the level of interest regarding the use of futures and forward contracts uh, and to do that, we, we try to modeling a logistic regression model to predict beef cattle farmer behavior in relation to the use of futures and forward contracts to predictors of on-farm production, like uh, annual revenue, uh, annual annual um, total animals sell annually, uh, age of um, of the the beef cattle farmer, uh, level of education, and so on. However, it was not possible to model a valid model due to problems in the database, like missing data or unrealistic data. Uh, and these data gaps may be due to the type of survey carried out via online, since for such a specific topic, a face-to-face -face interview would be necessary, uh, which unfortunately uh, cannot take place due to the restrictions imposed by the COVID-19 pandemic. So, in order to try to understand if it will be possible to differentiate these, the types of beef cattle farmers in this sample, we conducted a cluster analysis. We can see the results at graph 5. Um, uh, on left, we can see a, a skilled manager cluster composed by um, 53 beef cattle farmers on an average age of 41 years, high level of management and high level of education, with an interest in use for futures and forward contracts. On the other end, on the right at the graph 5, we can see the unskilled manager cluster composed by 40 beef cattle farmers, average age of six, uh, 62 years, average level of management and average level of education uh, with very little interest in using futures and forward contracts. I conclude this presentation by presenting the final conclusions of this research. We can see here that 41% of beef cattle farmers in this sample use a price control mechanism, um, that beef cattle farmers have a medium high level of skills in risk management, and that we can group uh, European beef cattle farms uh, according to farm risk management characteristics. So, summing up, uh, the use of forward contract is quite frequent among beef cattle farmers. There is a potential for the use of future contracts. Uh, having a financial institution to mediate activity in the future markets is a necessary condition for negotiating future contracts. And investing in the future markets requires a calculating, uh, calculating mindset capable of perceiving the dynamics influence the day-to-day -day life of the spot markets. Um, we can say that contracting futures and forwards can be similar to taki taking out uh, a car insurance. Uh, if we have an accident, the insurance covers it. And if we don't have an accident, we don't give the insurance premium as lost money. So thank you very, thank you all very much. Uh, I'm now at your disposal for any questions you may have and thanks. Thank you, Pedro, and thank you, Tomás. I don't know if you have any questions now.
If anyone has any questions, please either type them into the chat or if you would like to ask your question, you should be able to put your hand up and then I can allow you to, to use the microphone to speak. I think Case has a question. Uh, yes, uh, Thomas, I would like to ask you and also uh, Pedro, where in, in which European country um, is uh, our future contracts or forward countries not more used in beef from, for beef cattle farmers than in uh, uh, other European countries? We have given an example of Brazil and the US, but for example, in the UK or in Ireland or whatever, is there um, more or less uh, diffusion of this context? Uh, thank you, Keith, for the question. Um, we tried to to know it from uh, my uh, this research uh, in my thesis, but uh, unfortunately, um, we don't have um, answers from the same answers for every country. So we may have some uh, one answer at Ireland, two in Italy, three in Spain. So I think that uh, giving you a, a answer about that is going to be in incorrect because uh, we can't compare. Uh, but uh, it is interesting to study that from future. Um, we understand that in Portugal, uh, uh, they are um, the Portuguese beef cattle farmers are um, using this type of tools uh, much more than the other the other European beef cattle farmers. But uh, I can tell you specific country uh, only the the comparing Portugal with uh, other countries. We have a question from Magda. Yes, uh, both to, to Pedro and to Tomás, I don't know who, but um, in what way can we consider that um, for managing risk, uh, producers' contracts they might, they normally have, at least in Portugal, with the big multiples, with the retailers, um, how different are they if we compare this type of contracts with the future and forward contracts and what might be the advantage of one or the other <laughs> I know. thank you uh, well um i can try to um, say something on that topic actually that kind of contract, what you, you, you are mentioning, and Tomasa also talk about, are uh, uh, forward contracts. Forward contracts because they are established in a customizable way, customized way between both parts. Okay, the producer and the retailer. Let put it this way. I'm not saying this is the best word to describe it. Um, so it's a kind of a forward contract. The thing it is. Here in Portugal, there is a very significant difference of um, negotiate, negotiating or bargaining power between both parts. So instead of being certain that the price, the prices I, I show you, the future prices, they have a specific formula to be calculated. Okay? They are not random prices. They are not imposed prices. They are prices that reflect um, in a fair way, what is they're not they're not the price that will be the, a future price today is not the spot price in the future, but it's a good guess for that spot price. So if the futures are going up, then we know that the spot price will go up too. But in, with these specific contracts, um, the price. It's not necessarily a reflection of the general market, but is much more a reflection of the bargaining power of both sides. Okay, 
So um, that is eventually a, a, a downside of this flooded contract. Yes, it's I can customize it, but if they are, uh, if I have an unfair or uneven position and balanced position, I certainly will not get the most fair price. Thank you. Very clear. Yes, and very. <laughs> it makes sense. Uh, yes, of course. So to be clear, it's a little bit different. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you. Thank you. So, do we have any further questions from anybody, uh, any of the attendees? Ah, oh, here we go. There is a question in the chat box for you there. Um, Pedro and Tomas, did you want to take that? It says. Um, Just a second. No. Yeah. A few seconds to read, please. Well, I'm not certain if I understood the question, but uh, the questions. But let me try to say something on this. Um, as I was saying to Magda uh, and to all of you, of course, the the forward market and the future, in, even more the future markets, it's about uh, the power of both sides. Because actually, in the future markets, you don't have any idea about who is the other part. It's about there you see it a way to step to to con to manage my price risk. So I'm I'm stabilizing the price. I'm fixing the price, regardless of how interesting is my my product, because uh, um, uh, I'm missing. I'm I, I'm sorry. So as I was saying. You can say that, yeah, I have a product that everyone wants my product. Like oil, everyone wants oil, OK? But oil is nowadays very expensive. From the producer side, that's good. Not from the other part, OK? But again, this is not about beating the market. It's not about making the money. It's about fixing the price, OK? Uh, like the airliners, uh, British Airways, uh, France, um, um, Air France um, and Portugal, Tapa, Tapa, Portugal, they want to engage in this kind of contract to fix the price and not being able to uh, to suffer from changes in the price that can be very dramatic, as you are having right now. Okay, so this is to avoid risk, to avoid uncertainty. Of course, you don't need to. Um, Full insured uh, to get full insurance of your uh, all quantity. So you can decide just to insure 50, 60, 70 percent of your stock. Okay, and by doing that, you can you are managing your risk, not avoiding total risk. Okay, so it's a kind of a balance between what what you you expect too, because we're talking about the future. Okay, you have a we, we have a way to have an educated guess about the future, but we don't have a way to know the future for certain. You can try to beat the market if you believe you can have better and more information than the others and make better decisions than the others, regardless of how interesting your product is today, because you don't know what is going to happen in the future. But I'm not certain that I've answered your question. If not, please, can you... Um, Make it a bit more clear to me. At least, Mark, do you want to add anything? Yes, I want to add something. Uh, thank you, Mark, for your question. I just want to say that this type of uh, tools, uh, futures and forward contracts, um, 
aren't um, generic tools. Uh, what I want to say is that a producer can't look at these tools and say, uh, I'm going to use because uh, it's for beef cattle farmers. First of all, you need to look at your farm um, to understand if uh, this type of tools can fit your dimensions, dimension of your farm, uh, type of production, uh, because there are two future, two types of future mac markets, uh, one regarding cow calf production and other regarding um, um, cattle to finish, uh, so adult animals, uh, feedlot animals. So you need to you need to study uh, these type of tools uh, before uh, using them and. Of course, it's different from a cow calf produ producer or a beef uh, or a Finnish uh, producer. But um, in uh, an overview is that you you need to adapt the tool to your farm. Uh, so I don't know if this uh, answer your question, but uh, is what I I want to add, and I I expect that it helps. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I don't see any further questions coming in um, and I'm just slightly wary that we we have um, sort of hit our time mark for the session. So um, I just want to pass back to Magda perhaps for a few final uh, final words. Thank you Mike, mm -hmm. and thank you all. Um, it was very, very interesting to, to listen to, to Professor Pedro and to, to Mar, and uh, we hope you might, uh, those attending might find this uh, subject quite interesting. And of course, if you have particular questions directly to the speakers, you can send an email directly to them, uh, or even to me and uh, anyone from the bovine team, and we will direct. To, to them. Um, it was also important to, to give you some highlights about bovine project uh, made by my colleague Kay, Professor Kayser in Italy and uh, we hope this bovine project that has started uh, analyzing and studying different thematic areas and so close to beef farmers that we might from here get further development in the different areas and get really people linked to try to keep answering to the new challenges and always present challenges to the big sector. And thank you very much all. Thank you very much everybody and have a wonderful evening. We look forward to seeing you again on our next um, webinars. We will have quite a few more, six more this year. And the next one is on the 4th of April and information about this will be coming out very soon. So thank you very much and have a wonderful evening.